Hey, in this week's episode, we're taking a hearty beef stew made famous by Julia Child, Beef Bourguignon. But we're simplifying it and putting a cowboy twist on it, so come on, let's ride on into camp. We thank y'all for stopping by the wagon this week, and whew, Julia Child. Boy, I can remember sitting in my grandma's living room floor about six or seven years old. What was we watching? We didn't get but two channels, ABC and PBS. And who was on it? Julia Child. But I could tell that lady had something that I do in common, and that is what? She cooked from the heart. So we're gonna take her recipe, use some of her tips, change it just a little, cowboy it up, put a new saddle on it, and we're gonna fix it our way. Now. Julia, she fixed beef, let me see, beef, borg, bobbin, boof, boof, borg, borgin, beef. We're gonna make beef, borgin, beef stew and red wine. But one thing that me and Julia do agree on so very much, and that is quality meat to start this out. Now, stew is not a hard dish to prepare. Don't buy stew meat. Just don't go to the butcher and say, hey, could you give me three to four pounds of stew meat? You never know where they might have cut it off from or where it's coming from. But today, we're using a chuck roast. When you get good quality meat and start with it, you're just gonna end up with a better product. And you can see this chuck roast. It weighs about two and a half pounds. So I really needed two of them because I'm shooting for about four pounds of meat here. But look, there is a road map, just like Julia told me so many years ago. All these seams and little flaps, that's where we're gonna cut. Now, I have known some butchers just to just take a knife and cut through here and then cut it again. You're getting all the connective tissue, the membrane and everything out, and it's going to be tough. So let's just separate this out the way it's supposed to be, and you can see where you're supposed to cut. There is a guideline there, so just keep pulling it apart. And I really want you to go back and look at that, or maybe Shannon will have you a link, because Julia was, whew, she was pretty down on stew meat. And she said when you get them little old pieces of scrap that might be like this right here is in the stew meat package, I seen her just take it and do what, Julia? Show them what you did to it. The cover for stew meat. That's where I found these little nasty pieces and you don't know where it comes from on the animal. And it's too small and it looks like cat food and I don't like it. So you know, Julia took hers and she throwed hers, but not me. <laughs> Culinary advice. One for the duker and one for the bee. So here's another scene. What happens? Just cut that out. Now we got another piece of meat. We're gonna follow this line right on down here. Cut that out. Then we can go back and cut this into what we call the right size of meat. Now Julia, when she was doing her version, she was going about like this right here. Well folks, you can just fit one of them in a bowl at a time. I'm gonna speed this cooking time up and I'm gonna go ahead and cut them in about one inch pieces, about like so. This way I know I'll have a little quicker cook time. And any of that fat that you trim off there, just discard or slide down here to your taste tester approval. You see me take about eight slices of that thick cut bacon and then cut it in little inch pieces. Put it out here, add us about a tablespoon of olive oil or two and cook that bacon down. Now you've seen when I got that out with that slotted spoon deal and mashed that grease out of it because I want to save every bit of that bacon grease that we can get. It is very important that we have it. Then I took me about five carrots or which is two cups and two whole white onion and sort of diced them up. We're going to dump them all right in here and we're just going to let them go to browning and cooking and getting tender. Going to take eight to ten minutes we need to season that with a little salt and pepper. Now this is where me and Julia might differ a little too. I do love me some carrots. If I'm gonna have stew, carrots are gonna be in it. I like to give it some of that bacon grease flavor, let them onions get in there with it. When we get to the point that the onions are browned and ready to go, we need to go ahead and mince four garlic cloves, put them in there, give it a cooking for about a minute because you don't wanna burn that garlic. Stir them continuously or they will burn. Then we'll transfer this all over into a Dutch oven. Well, that cubed meat, it is time to put it to use. Now, you got to remember when you have that four to five pounds of cubed meat like this, you're not going to just do all this at one time. And it is very important, as Julia told you too, you want to pat this meat dry before you ever begin to season it. You can season with salt and pepper, but why would you when you could have some of this Red River Ranch original? So just give it a pretty generous coating all the way around, and we'll sort of rub that in. 
toss it about and give it some more on the other side. Now at this point when we know that meat's dry, we can go ahead and put in here and it's a little easier to mix up with the seasoning on it. So let's dry this other out as we're being watched so carefully by quality control here to make sure that not even a drop of beef is, hits the ground. Well, we got oil in the skillet. As you can see, it is hot. I want to hear that sizzle. Our meat is patted dry and ready to go in. Like I say, don't overcrowd these things because we want them to get brown on all three and a half to four sides, however many they got. Now folks, we ain't browning them all the way plumb through done. I'm just wanting to brown the outside edges really good. Then we'll transfer that batch over here into the Dutch oven and do the second batch. Well, we got all our meat browned up, we did it, and you see me do a little bit of that classical French cooking that I seen from Julia, what was it? I deglazed my pan, it was a little bit of wine. Let her get all that goodness right up there, come off the bottom, pour that right back in here. Next, what is deglazing? What is deglazing? Deglazing is the sediment that you have in the bottom of the pan, the residue that comes from browning meat or something that you've cooked in there. Then you want to deglaze it. You turn all that loose to where it brings up all that flavor and you get to keep it. So remember that bacon that we had there that we had to use? Whew, let's put it in there. Pearl onion. Now folks, we need to have a little talk about pearl onions. Now if you're really in a bind and you don't know what to get your wife for Christmas, run you some thread down through here, let these dry, the give same. them to- No, it's not the same. Oh, it's not a, like that. No. Oh. And the reason I like to use them in this particular dish is it holds its shape even after it's cooked. So you get to cook, you get to eat this whole little onion. And folks, you need to use a pretty stout red wine, something that's pretty dry. I would even say maybe it's even bitter. Three to four cups of beef broth. I want it to go ahead and just come up to where it covers plumb up above all the meat and everything else. So you'll see it when it gets to that point. It may take all of it. It may just take three. A little bit of time. About that much. That much, which is the right amount. Two tablespoons of tomato paste. We just take some of that liquid right out of there. I want to get us all the way mixed up. That way we ain't got no clumps, humps, bumps, lumps, or contusions. So when you got it to this point, let's give it a good mix and get the thyme, the tomato paste, everybody all joined in there together. Y'all know red wine has got a lot of acid in it. And if you got you a new piece of cast iron, don't be doing this in it, okay? Cause it is hard on seasoning. This old thing's about 35 years old, been seasoned and seasoned and seasoned again. Sure, it's hard on it, but it can be done. Well, you seen us bring it back over to the fire. Give it a little stir there. We just want to bring it back to just a really good simmer all the way around. And when that gets to simmering like that, let's go ahead and put it over here on a tall trivet. You see me dry out the ground because the good Lord has blessed us. We got a little rain. Then we'll go pretty light coals around the outside edge on the bottom, pretty heavy on top. We want, want to maintain that little simmering effect all the way through. Now, if you're doing this in the house, you're going to run 300 and you want to keep an eye on this. You just want to keep that constant little simmering effect going there for about an hour and a half. We want that meat to be good and tender. If you're doing this outside in a Dutch oven, remember we can maintain our heat here by the height of our trivet and the amount of coals that we have. Now we will have to rotate that lid one way, bottom the other, just to keep us a good even heat surface all the way around. Now the reason you've got it in a vessel like this that's got a good lid that seals all it in, it's not to be taken off. Now, if you need to check that in the oven about 35 to 45 minutes in, that's fine. Take you a quick pick. Make sure it ain't boiling real hard. You just want to keep that simmer. But that lid needs to stay on there and shut the oven door.
we checked the meat and it ain't fur off it's getting pretty tender so i took me about two tablespoons of olive oil and two tablespoons of butter put in this skillet let it get good and melted we have one pound of mushrooms that we have thinly sliced and we're gonna cook them in there and i think as julia would say we're gonna saute we just want to cook them eight or ten minutes until they get good and brown but give everybody a good raking around there just so they get some of that butter back on them well, I would call them somewhat brown, so let's get this other remaining two tablespoons of butter, three I mean, sorry. We'll let it melt, and then we're gonna take about three tablespoons of flour and mix in with this and see if we can't get this to thicken a little. Now you just wanna slowly sprinkle that flour in as that butter melts. That way we get as a thickening agent. You can see we got this all browned up well. Everything is good. Try to get that scraping off the bottom because we need it all to be over here in our little pot of stew. And in it goes. We need a little garlic salt in there, folks, to finish this off. Go back to the fire here and let that simmer for about 15 minutes to see if this thickens up some. Folks, there is just so much great flavor that is blended in this pot. When you put the mushrooms back in there with the flour it just thickens this up to where it's just the right consistency now my sweet friend julia she would serve this by itself dip it off there not so much of the broth put it on a plate and then she would serve out of it maybe with a side of broccoli or something like that me i'm going the cowboy version all out full force you know what that is in there shan looks like ice cream no mashed <laughs> taters that's how i like to serve this dish and I'm going to reach down in there and get me a big old honking dipper full. And I'm going to ladle it right there on top of them mashed potatoes. Little mushrooms falling right off there. i got to have one more carrot to even the battle out. As my good friend Justin Wilson would say. And I wonder did he know Julia Child. Because I'm telling you, I guarantee you this is going to be good. We're going to pair this with some wine. What kind? Whatever they had on sale today, folks. I promise you that. And get you some of them mashed taters. To go with it. Uh -oh. The flavors are outstanding. The wine, I think it just sort of brings it all together, but when you can mix that with the mushrooms, mm, it's just a great, great broth that's with a great cut of meat. Remember, don't buy stew meat. Me and Julia both told you. Get you a chuck roast. You can cut it yourself. You're saving money. Serve this however you want, whether it's with a piece of garlic bread dipped off down there in that. Folks, pardon me, but this video is going to take you about 20 more minutes for y'all to watch because I'm going to eat the whole bowl full. Well, we hope you enjoyed this because we sure did, and I think Julia would have too if she would have been here. As always, I salute our, all our servicemen and women and our veterans and all the spouses who are left at home as those folks are serving wherever they may be. We tip our hat to you also. Now, folks, I ask you, please check out the website. There is a lot of new stuff that is there. Christmas is here. It's time to shop. Remember, new cookbook's coming out March 17th, but if you want to make sure you get a copy one of the first ones, pre-order. There will be a little link down there below where you can see all this. And as my good friend Julia would say, See you next time. Bon appétit. Hope you have a blessed holiday season and I'll see you down the Beef Bourguignon Trail.